All right, uh, there's a bunch of uh, uh, stories all, all over the place uh, coming out on the, the whole Biden corruption um, issue. Uh, it really is, uh, it keeps blowing up, it keeps getting bigger, at least uh, according to some of the reports uh, that are out there. Part of the challenge here is to figure out what's legit and what's partisan. Now, I know somebody's going to say, yeah, but you assume everything said about Trump is true. No, I mean, Trump admits everything he says about Trump is true. I mean, Trump didn't hide the fact that he hid uh, confidential documents. Trump didn't hide the fact that he tried to influence the election in Georgia. Trump didn't hide the fact that he worked very, very hard, including going after uh, uh, Mike Pence to try to overturn the election. So, I mean, I think I think the evidence is just staring us in our face in terms of uh, Trump. And, it, and, and in terms of Biden, there's a lot of evidence, but exactly what is, what isn't. Um, uh, what is accurate, what is not, what is just hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Uh, and, and of course, because it's so partisan, it, it, the media is completely biased, right? I mean, if you go to, if you go to the, most of the uh, traditional mainstream media, they, they're just not covering the story. And if you go to the right-wing video, media, I mean, uh, Biden is responsible for every, uh, every uh, uh, horrible thing that's happened in the world in the last 50 years. He's the most evil president in human history. Uh, and the truth is probably somewhere in between those. Anyway, uh, the latest out of the House Oversight Committee is that, uh, you know, Hunter Biden and ultimately uh, Joe Biden, uh, you know, even when he was vice president, had meetings with a lot of kind of oligarchs from Russia, from Kazakhstan, and from Ukraine. Uh, meetings that Joe Biden says he never discussed business at. Maybe that's true. But meetings that ultimately led to millions of dollars, and, and they're estimating up to $20 million, of funds flowing from these oligarchs uh, to uh, Hunter Biden and other Biden's bank accounts. Uh, even if there was no literal uh, uh, Joe Biden doing anything in support of these oligarchs, doing something to change U.S. government policy in favor of these oligarchs, uh, they were obviously paying for access. They were obviously, I mean, again, somebody did this really cool story. He, like, took, you know, this. Uh, he, he took this, um, an example um, uh, of, uh, of a board member on Apple, right, uh, Apple, Apple Computers, uh, I think, I think, her, I forget her name, but she is like a senior person at BlackRock. So massive uh, experience in finance. She uh, sits on the board of Apple Computers. For Sitting on the board of Apple Computers, she gets something like $100,000 plus $200,000, $100,000 cash and, and $200,000 in uh, stock. Uh, let's say the whole package is worth over a year, $400,000, $500,000. This is... Uh, this is to sit on the board of the largest, one of the largest and one of the most complicated, complex companies in the world. This is a woman eminently qualified to do so uh, with vast experience in the world of finance and in the world of corporate finance uh, and uh, eminently qualified, eminently knowledgeable. And she's getting maybe half a million dollars a year, probably less for sitting on the board of Apple. Hunter Biden. Loser, knows nothing, uh, 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 eminently unqualified to sit on anybody's board, sits on Burisma's board and makes $5 million. Now, even, even to a lot of, I think, leftist commentators, this is obviously nuts, right? Obviously, something else is going on here. And the obvious thing that's going on here is they're buying access. Whether that access was provided question mark, and whether that access led to any favors or any different kind of behavior on the part of the American government, question mark, we don't know. But the reality is that Hunter Biden was paid huge amounts of money for something he was clearly not qualified to do. He had no knowledge in the energy industry, he had no knowledge in board of directors, there's no knowledge in business. 
The guy is a nobody and a nothing, except he is the son of who used to be the vice president of the United States. And that was it. That was his full, uh, you know, qualifications. And, uh, you know, we've already learned from Hunter Biden's associate that by, uh, the Vice President Biden would call his son, and often it just happened, happened by accident, to be uh, at, a, uh, at, a, uh, at a, a business meeting, and, but he never talked business. But it turns out he also met these people in person, maybe didn't talk business, but met them in person. Uh, some trips were negotiated, whether they happened or not, again, not completely clear to places like Kazakhstan uh, to meet certain people. Um, you know, and again, um, people say, well, Biden's supporting the Ukraine war because he's, he's in the pocket of the Ukrainians because it turns out that uh, Hunter Biden, at least it seems, was getting uh, significant amounts of money from Russian oligarchs like, you know, Yelena Batuina, who is supposedly uh, transferred $3.5 million to a entity controlled by Devon Archer, the, the uh, partner of Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden. Um, you know, uh, uh, now, after she transferred their money, she, you know, she happened to attend a dinner in which Joe Biden attended a dinner with her and Biden. And, uh, and so, again, what she got for the three and a half million dollars, we don't know. But again, it's, it's Russian, it's Kazakh. Kazakhstan is an ally of Russia. Um, I guess Cafe Milano is in D.C. was the favorite place to meet uh, for these things. I, I mean, there's a lot. And, and clearly, there's some really ugly stuff here. Clearly, there's some real corruption here. Um, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, Hunter Biden seems like the kind of uh, leech that will do anything he can to leverage his family name to get as much money out of it. And, um, and uh, yeah. So, um, to, be, uh, to be followed. I mean, I think, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what the plea deal, if, the, if that's ever going to come together. And then it's going to be interesting to see whether the Republicans uh, impeach Biden over this, whether they think they have enough to, to, to take it to impeachment. Uh, of course, you know, because everything is partisan today, it'll fail in the Senate. Uh, whether the mainstream media will ever pick up on this, will ever do anything about this, also interesting. And whether a broader investigation over the, the, the way in which influence is sold in Washington, D.C., to Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, um, is, uh, would, be, would be really whether that is ever going to happen. I, I'm, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. The answer is no.